We know that using treats in our training is a really effective way to get our dogs to listen to us, but a big mistake out there is that people often become very dependent on the food. They need to you know, shake the cookie bag in order for the dog to, to listen to them. So today we're gonna to talk a little bit about how to use food effectively in your training so that that doesn't happen to you. And if you suspect that your dog already is learning only to listen when there's food involved, we're also gonna to talk to you about how to fix that. I'm Cam McCann and welcome back to McCann Dogs. So let's talk about why food is such a great resource when we're training our puppies. Now it's pretty obvious, puppies generally like food, so we often like to use something that's gonna get our puppies interested in working for us, get them learning that listening to us is fun, and again, we need to use something that we can compete against all of those natural distractions around us. So in the beginning, we end up using a lot of food in our training to keep the puppies motivated and engaged with us, but there gets to a certain point when we want to move away from all of that food and ensure that later on down the road, our puppies are actually listening to us and they're not looking in our hands to see whether we have something for them in order for them to decide whether they're gonna you know, listen to us or not. As we're conditioning to train our puppies to work for food, it's a really good idea to introduce some type of marker word that you're gonna be able to use down the road to let your dog know that they're right. And we recommend that you use the word yes. And when we have a baby puppy, one of the, the our most favorite things to do is to teach them how amazing that word yes is. You know, if I was to say yes to you and then hand you $100 or you know a chocolate bar or something that you really loved, and I was to repeat that over and over and over again, you would start to feel really good and excited when I said the word yes to you. And we literally do exactly the same thing with our puppy. We say yes, and then we follow that by giving them a high value reward. And we repeat that until the dog starts to love when we use the word yes. Now, this enables us to use that yes as a marker anytime our dog does something correct. And we want you to think of it like taking a snapshot in time. So if your dog sits and their little bum hits the floor, you can mark that by saying the word yes. And that buys you the time to get in your additional reinforcements. It could be food, it could be affection, it could be a little play with a toy, something that lets them know that they're correct. And over time, as you're practicing yes, followed by a reward, eventually that word yes becomes so amazing to your puppy that you can be more random with your food and your toys. You can actually depend solely on the word yes and your dog's gonna feel satisfied. Now the part that you really need to understand in order for this to be successful is that you need to make sure you have really good timing when you're delivering your word yes and also when you're using food. If this timing is not done correctly, you can very quickly start to depend on the food and that word yes isn't going to have as much importance. Dogs learn within one second. So when we're training, we need to make sure that we're cueing our dog or marking our dog with the word yes and then we're following it with some type of motivating reward. A lot of people end up doing it the other way around, which causes the dog to look and seek for the food or the reward first without really worrying about the word yes. So it's very important that the word yes comes first, followed then by whatever reinforcement that you're going to use. And in some cases, using food is one of your best options. When people are trying to train their dogs to you know, listen to a verbal command or a hand signal, they often do it while engaging the dog with the food the entire time. And unfortunately what happens is that, especially if your dog is very food motivated, the dog's not thinking about anything about what you're doing with your body or what you're doing with your voice right now. She's completely focused on the food. So if I wanted to teach her to sit you know, on a command and I was to say pineapple, for example, pineapple, and then I would lure her into position, she's not paying any attention to my command. So if I practice that over and over and over again, and I got to the point where she was lying down and I said, pineapple, she's gonna say, well, you know, I don't really know what to do. Where's the food? You can see she's already looking at the food. So if I was to do this correctly, I would need to make sure that she can clearly hear the command before she's shown how to go into position. So I would have my food ready, but it's hidden away. I would say, pineapple. Yes, good girl. And then I would use the food to help her into position. And I would need to repeat that multiple times until she understood how to respond to the word independently of the food. Now, another common mistake that people often make is they set out and they sort of assume that the dog's gonna know the command and they say, pineapple. So she doesn't know what to do. And then they show the dog with the treat. Now, too much time has gone past now. Dogs learn within one second. So when I'm training her to do a new skill, I must present the command or the signal 
followed one second later by some type of motivator. And it could, in this case, be food. It could be a toy. It could be movement. There's all kinds of things you could do to motivate the dog to assume a, a specific behavior, but it needs to be separated in this manner. So I'm now going to show you what it looks like if it's done correctly. And maybe if I'm lucky, I can teach Funky to sit on the word pineapple. So I'm going to get her out of that sitting position, sort of a default for her. I have my treats ready. I'm going to say the word followed one second later by that uh, cue with the treats. So I'm going to say pineapple. Yes. I'm going to lure her up into a sit and then I can reward. Okay, let's try that again. Wait. Pineapple. Yes. Good girl. Command first, followed by the treat. And again, you'll notice, lie down, good girl, wait. When I say the command, my food is not on her nose. She's not smelling it or licking it. She knows that I have it. She's not stupid. Hold on, baby. You gotta wait for me to tell you. Pineapple. Yes, good girl. Okay, we're gonna try one more. Good girl, wait. Pineapple. Yes, good girl. Now, if things go well, when you're practicing with this with your puppy, you're gonna do multiple repetitions, but several days in a row. I'm going to just fly by the seat of my pants here and see if she can figure this out. And I'm gonna see whether I can get her to SIT on the command pineapple. So if she does this well, I'm gonna give her a really awesome reward. Ready? Pineapple. Oh. Darn. So that means I haven't done enough repetitions. Now, this is where I can give you some good dog training advice. A common mistake that people would make at this point is they would say pineapple, 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 and they would keep repeating it. Oh, good girl. You can see she's trying to figure out what on earth I want. Now, all that's happening here is I'm teaching her to, you know, problem solve and be not really sure about what the command is. And I'm also teaching her, I'm going to say pineapple four times and then you should sit for a cookie. So I'm going to go back to a bit of a training mode. Okay, lie down again. Pineapple. Yes. Good girl. Okay. Lie down. Good girl. Wait. Oops. Wait. Pineapple. Yes. Good girl. Okay. Try again. Lie down. Wait. Pineapple. Yes. Good girl. Now I'm going to try and test her again. Lie down. Good. Wait. Pineapple. Nice try. Pineapple. Yes. Good girl. Okay. So again, she makes an error. I don't keep asking and asking. I go back to showing. Pineapple. Yeah. Yes, good girl, wow. And once she is successful, I need to be very quick to yes and then reward and give her lots of rewards. What a good girl, you're so smart with that little pineapple. Another common mistake that people make is rewarding their dog with food, but in the wrong position. So for example, if I've asked Funky to sit or lie down and I go to give her a reward and just as I'm about to feed her, she ends up standing up, we have a lot of people that say good and they feed their dog anyways. And what starts to happen is the dog learns that when you say sit and you approach them, they're gonna stand up for the treat every single time. So keep in mind that what you've asked your dog to do needs to be reinforced in that position to strengthen the skill. So if I wanna teach Funky to sit, when I reward her, I'm gonna feed her in a way that she still continues sitting, yes. I might raise my hand above her nose a little bit more, keeping that weight in her bum so she doesn't pop up for the sit. Good girl, good sit. Same thing for the down. If people reward in the down, we have a lot of people that say yes, and they pull their food further away and the dog pops up out of position and we reward anyways. This can create a lot of confusion for the dog because they learn what I'm rewarded for, my mom or dad must like, and I'm gonna keep repeating that. So it's very important that I'm clear with my dog that if I've said yes and I'm gonna reward my dog's still assuming that position as I go to actually deliver the food to them. Now, how do you know when you're ready to wean off of the food? You know, what sign is your dog gonna give you that you're ready to start making progressions in your training? Now, typically, if we're starting to use food, the next progression that we would make is seeing if our dog can follow a hand signal without having food in our hands. Dogs actually respond to hand signals and body language much more naturally and more easily than the verbal command. So that's the step that we would start with next. Now, in order to do this, I need to make sure that I'm really clear about what hand signal my dog's starting to pick up on. So for example, if I wanted to teach her to, to lie down on a hand signal, if I have food in my hand, I'm going to pay very special attention to what my hand looks like when I go to give her a signal. If sometimes I lure with my hand open, other times I point, that can actually be a really big difference to a dog. So I'm just going to start with my food in between my fingers like so. I'm going to say down and then I'm going to lure one second later with my hand signal taking note of that hand signal, and then I want to progress to not having any food in my hand at all. So here's how we're going to make this transition a little bit more smooth. Okay, babe, 
I'm going to get a couple treats ready in my pocket here, in my bait pouch. I'm just going to kind of hide it away for a moment. I've warmed her up. I know she's ready to go into position. I'm going to hold my hand in exactly the same way as I did a moment ago. Once she hits the deck, I'm going to say yes, and then I'm going to follow by giving multiple rewards. And I'm going to talk to you specifically about how we deliver the food that really amplifies this exercise. So it looks something like this. Down. Yes, so she fall without food. I'm gonna keep my signal hand in position and then I'm gonna move my food to my signal hand. And here's why this is so crucial. If this is your signal hand and when your dog has a great performance, you yes and feed out of your bait pouch over here, where do you think the dog's gonna start paying attention? They're only gonna look at that bait pouch or at the hand that's holding the food. And the hand signal hand isn't going to have as much importance. So I'm gonna show you that again. Okay, Funky, I have my food hidden away down yes good girl my hand stays in place and i simply move the food to my signal hand so she learns that this hand is the most important thing what a good girl okay very nice now if you're looking for other ways to make the food a little less obvious you can do very simple things like rather than having the bait pouch be so visible to your dog just swing it around behind you so they can't see it quite as easily now as we start to wean off the food good girl in our hands the word yes becomes a really crucial part of our training if I don't have any food in my hands and my, my treats are behind my back, they're not as easily for me, easy for me to get at, the word yes is gonna be a really, really important step. So that if I ask Funky to do something, like I tell her down and she lies down, if I say yes when she's in position, I now can take that extra moment to get the food out to reward her. Um, if I'm not able to use the yes as a marker, it's virtually impossible for me to feed her within one second of her lying down if it, the food isn't in my hands. So I really want you to think Think about the yes being really crucial in that snapshot in time when that position is being made saying yes and then from there if it takes you a couple extra seconds to fumble to get the treats out that's okay because you've already nailed that perfect timing using the word yes and on top of that your dog's starting to get used to listening to you without having to see food in your hands first you're asking for a behavior sit yes and then you can reach for food from there Good girl. And as more practice uh, comes into play, your dog's gonna be much more reliable without needing to see the food first. Fast forward in your training a little bit where you get to the point where maybe you don't need food in your training anymore. Something as simple as we can stick with the sit because it's an easy one to kind of understand. If I ask Funky to sit and she doesn't go into the sit and I know that I've trained this and she really does understand it, what you wanna be careful of is you don't go, oh, you didn't listen get my treat out, show her the treat, sit, and then reward her because very smart dogs will start to learn to just ignore the first command and wait for you to pull food out. So there's gonna be a point in the training where you're not going to default back to the food. In the early stages, when our dogs aren't really um, having a clear understanding, we are gonna do that. We're gonna help them, just like I showed you with the pineapple command. I went back to using food because I knew, Funky didn't know it yet, I needed to be in training mode. But if I've asked my dog to do something that I know she's been trained to do, and she's just maybe a bit distracted or she's being a bit bratty in the moment, I'm not gonna pull out food. I might use, um, you know, a leash or a gentle placement instead. So again, if she's standing, and I ask her to <laughs> stand, wait for a second, and I ask her to SIT and she doesn't, rather than pulling food out, I might repeat the command sit, good girl, and then just gently place her into position, good girl. And I'm not gonna reward her for that because I kinda had to help her to do it. I might pat and praise her, and then I might try this, okay, sit. Yay, that's it. And once she's done it on my command, that's when I can use the food to reinforce her. So Funky doesn't train me to get the food out in order to get her to listen. I train her that if you listen to me, the food may come your way. Otherwise, I'm gonna make sure that you understand that you need to listen when I ask you to do things. And it's not about being mean or nasty. It's simply about calmly following through, teaching your dog that you're not just gonna pull treats out in order for them to listen. You expect them to listen all of the time. Using treats in your training is not as simple as just saying yes and then giving your dog a treat. There's actually lots of different ways that you can use food that can really amplify your dog's performance or their ability to listen to you. A lot of people say to us that they struggle with training their dog with treats because they're not interested in food or they don't find food very valuable. And um, sometimes what can happen is we can teach our dogs that food isn't very valuable by giving them access to it all of the times. Something that you may consider avoiding is free feeding your dog. So leaving the bowl of food out and 
letting your dog kind of graze throughout the day, it really changes the excitement that breakfast time or dinner time brings. In fact, one of the really great things that you can do to amplify your dog's motivation to work for food is use the dog's breakfast or their dinner as part of your training time. When we have young puppies, um, you know, several times a week, their meals are given with hand feeding and I will take a hand feel of food of their uh, kibble and I'll practice some sits and downs, responses to name, all for their actual meal. It's a time when I know my puppy's already hungry and I can use it to, you know, have five or 10 minutes of bonding time over food that the dog's already excited to get uh, in the first place. There are going to be times when you have the best treats in the world and you're still not going to get any results. You know, just changing the value of food isn't always the answer. It can help a lot of the time, but it's not always the answer. And if you find that you're in an environment where you could literally shake a steak in front of your dog's face and they're not really going to react to that, you're going to need to go in different directions. And what that dog's telling you in that moment is the environment that they're in is too overwhelming. It's too distracting. And what we don't want to be doing when we're training our dogs is putting them in a situation where it's too easy for them to fail or to ignore us. So if the value of the food is not persuasive enough, make sure that you're aware of the environment that you're training in. You might need to avoid going to those dog parks or having your dog around a ton of people or those particular distractions until you're able to build on more success in a quieter environment. Your dog has a little bit of an, more of an understanding of the skill or the expectation that you're looking for and then slowly slowly increase the distractions so that your dog's able to function. Um, often you can fix things with, with great value treats and the dog will learn to choose that over other things, but that's not always the answer. Sometimes it's not about the food, it's about how you're interacting and what type of environment and structure you're providing for the dog in that moment. Now I mentioned the word jackpot and this is one of my favorite things that I get to do when training my dog. So jackpot rewarding means that when your dog does something extra awesome, you're going to say yes and then give them a jackpot reward which means not just one treat but several treats in a row now this needs to be done in a very particular way in order for your dog to feel like they've hit the jackpot so if you have several treats in your hand try to avoid saying yes and giving them all of the treats at once in your dog's mind it's basically just getting one big treat what actually affects more change in your dog's mind and their feelings is to say yes and then feed once twice Third, three times, four times, five times, and just keep going. And as you're delivering the food, you're gonna actually see your dog get wide-eyed. They might salivate and start to go, whoo, man, this is awesome. And so we, cha we save those jackpot rewards for when we've asked our dog to do something and they just knock it out of the park. Or I love to do it when I've my dog offers to do something for me before I've even asked, like pay attention to me around distractions. Sometimes I'll even say the word jackpot and then give them a series of high value rewards so they know what they've just done is absolutely amazing. Now, if you're wondering what a day in our household looks like when we're training a puppy, and if you'd like to have a schedule on how to train your puppy throughout the day, check out that card right there. And if you'd like some specific advice on how to train your puppy, make sure you check out our Puppy Essentials online training course where you can work with one of our McCann instructors to make sure that your puppy training process goes as smoothly as possible. The link is in the description and below. And on that note, I'm Cal McCann. Happy training.